Hey there! For today's math video, we are going to learn how to solve algebraic equations. To start, let's define what an equation is. An equation is a statement where we set two mathematical expressions equal to each other. Remember variables? The equations we are going to focus on in this video will all have exactly one variable present on either side of the equation or both sides of the equation. We'll get to these kinds of equations later, but first, we need to explain what it means for an equation to be true. We say that an equation is true when the left-hand side of the equation and the right-hand side of the equation are indeed equal to each other. Let's look at this equation, 5 times negative 2 equals 10 minus 20. Let's see if this equation is true. For the left-hand side, we can see that 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. Now, let's look at the right-hand side. 10 minus 20 is negative 10. So let's write that down. Now, we can definitely say that negative 10 is equal to negative 10. So yes, the equation 5 times negative 2 equals 10 minus 20 is a true equation. You try this one. 2 plus 4 equals 7 minus 2. Think about whether the equation is true or not. What do you think? Well, let's look at the left-hand side. 2 plus 4 is 6. So let's write that down. Now, on to the right-hand side. 7 minus 2 is 5. Oh no! 6 is not equal to 5. The equation 2 plus 4 equals 7 minus 2 is not a true equation. In other words, this equation is false. Whenever an equation turns out to be false, we write a slash through the equal sign, which is a way to say 2 plus 4 is not equal to 7 minus 2. Now that we have an idea of what it means for an equation to be true, we can now start solving equations. Look at this problem here. This problem reads, solve the equation x plus 5 equals 12. What does this problem mean when it says solve? When we solve, we are trying to find a number that we can replace x with so that the equation is true. When we end up finding this number, we will call this number a solution to the equation. So how do we find the solution? We will go over how to do this, but let's first try out a few options. Is 3 a solution? Well, if we replace x with 3 in the left-hand side of the equation, we get 3 plus 5, which is 8. This is a problem because the right-hand side of the equation is 12. 8 is not equal to 12, so 3 is not a solution to the equation. Okay, 3 is not a solution to the equation, so how can we find a solution? Well, we can think about the problem a little differently. A problem like solving the equation x plus 5 equals 12 is the same exact problem as asking what plus 5 equals 12. Well, remembering our math facts, we know that 7 plus 5 is 12. So replacing x with a 7 seems reasonable. Thus, we can say that 7 is a solution to the equation. The way we write that down is by simply writing x equals 7. While this method might be a good way to start learning how to solve equations, we're going to need to use a more systematic method to solve equations. This will help you solve more complicated equations in the long run. First, let's talk about an analogy that will help us later on when we start solving equations. Think of a scale with two plates. Now, let's put 10 equal weights on either side, like so. Let's think about what happens to the scale when we add and remove weights. What if we add two weights to each plate? Does the scale stay balanced? Yes! 
since we are adding the same amount of weights to each plate, the scale should remain balanced. Let's go back to having 10 weights on each plate. What if we subtract two weights from each plate? Does the scale stay balanced? Yes, since we are removing the same amount of weights to each plate, the scale should remain balanced. Let's go back to having 10 weights on each plate once more. What if we add five weights only on the left plate? What happens? Since we are adding weights only to one plate, the scale will become unbalanced. What do we need to do to the right plate in order for the scale to be balanced again? Well, we would need to add five weights to the right plate to regain balance. This may seem like a weird analogy at first, but later on we will see how it relates to solving equations. Now, let's get to solving some. Let's solve the equation y minus 5 equals 10. In these kinds of problems, our goal is to leave the variable by itself on either side of the equation. To do so, we're going to follow a series of five steps. The first step reads, simplify both sides of the equation. Well, there's no way to simplify y minus 5 and 10, so we don't need to do anything for this step. Our second step says to pick a side you want to keep the variable. There is no wrong answers. Since the variable y is on the left-hand side, let's keep y there. Remember, the goal of this problem is to leave y by itself. Our third step is to find what is keeping the variable from being alone. We want y to be alone, and there is a minus 5 in the way. The fourth step says to do the opposite on both sides of the equation. We saw that the minus 5 was keeping y from being alone. So, we need to do the opposite on both sides. What is the opposite of subtracting 5? Well, the opposite of subtracting 5 is adding 5. So, let's add 5 on both sides. On the left-hand side, this leaves us with y. And on the right-hand side, we get 10 plus 5, which is 15. Think back to our scale analogy. Adding 5 weights to both plates kept the scale in balance. We're doing the same thing here. The equation is staying balanced. Step 5 says to repeat from step 3 until the variable is by itself. We see that y is by itself. So we're done. In later problems, we will actually have to go back to step 3 and do some more work. But for this problem, we can consider ourselves done. y is equal to 15. That is the solution to the equation. Something that is nice about solving equations is that you can easily check your work. Let's look at our original equation, y minus 5 equals 10. And let's substitute y with 15 and see if the equation remains true. Well, 15 minus 5 is 10. And 10 is definitely equal to 10. So yep, our solution is correct. Here's another one. x over 12 equals 5. Remember that when you see a fraction like x over 12, you can also think of it as x divided by 12. Let's get to work. First step one, there's yet again nothing to simplify. Let's move on. For step two, let's keep x on the left-hand side since it is already there. For step three, we can see that there is a division by 12 that is keeping x from being alone. The next step will fix that. Step four tells us to do the opposite on both sides. The opposite of dividing by 12 is multiplying by 12. So let's multiply 12 on both sides. On the left-hand side, the 12s cancel out. And on the right-hand side, five times 12 is 60. Thus, x is equal to 60. Notice that x is by itself. So there is no need to go back to step 3 and repeat. The solution to the equation is 60. As usual, let's check our work. Replacing the x in our original equation with 60, we get 60 divided by 12 is equal to 5. 
Checking that this is true, we can divide 60 by 12, and that's 5. 5 is equal to 5, and the equation is true. Here's one last one before we get into some more intricate examples. Negative 4 times t equals 100. Let's go! For step 1, there is nothing to simplify on either side, so let's go to step 2. We now need to pick a side where we want to keep the variable t on. Since t is already on the left-hand side, let's keep it there. Now for step 3. Let's see what's keeping t from being alone. t is being multiplied by negative 4. So for step 4, we need to do the opposite of multiplying by negative 4 on both sides, which is dividing by negative 4. On the left-hand side, the negative 4s cancel out, and on the right-hand side, we need to divide 100 by negative 4. Remember, our rules for dividing integers, 100 is positive and negative 4 is negative. The quotient should be negative. When we divide 100 by 4, we get 25, which means that 100 divided by negative 4 is negative 25. Here we can see that t equals negative 25. The variable t is by itself, so there is no need to go back to step 3 and repeat. We're done! The solution to the equation is negative 25. Take a moment to check that the answer is correct the same way we have been checking our work for the past few examples. Here is our work for the check. t equals negative 25 is a correct solution. Let's move on to an example that is more complicated. Here we have the equation 26 equals 4 times y plus 2 times y plus 2. For step 1, let's simplify both sides of the equation. Looks like we have some work to do for this step. On the left-hand side, we have 26, which can't be simplified any further. But the right-hand side, 4y plus 2y plus 2 could use some simplifying. In particular, notice that 4y and 2y can be combined since they are like terms. 4y plus 2y equals 6y. So let's write that down. Our equation is now 26 equals 6y plus 2. For step 2, we need to pick a side for the variable y to stay on. Since y is on the right-hand side, let's keep it there. Step 3 is going to be slightly different than before. Let's think about what is keeping y from being alone on the right-hand side. Well, there is a multiplication by 6 and an addition by 2. So where do we start? Let's add a little note to our post-it of steps. When finding something that keeps the variable from being alone on one side, deal with any additions or subtractions first. Once all of the additions and subtractions are dealt with, we can then handle any multiplications or divisions you see. Let's follow this advice in our problem. Remember, the things that are keeping y from being alone are the multiplication by 6 and the addition by 2. Since we want to handle the addition or subtraction first before any multiplication or division, let's worry about the addition by 2 first. For step 4, let's do the opposite of adding by 2 on both sides. Subtracting 2 on both sides, we get 26 minus 2 on the left-hand side, which is 24. And on the right-hand side, we are left with 6y. So now that we're on step 5, let's look at the equation 24 equals 6y. The variable y is still not by itself, so we have to go back to step 3 and see what is keeping y from being alone. The multiplication by 6 is keeping y from being alone, so step 4 instructs us to divide by 6 on both sides. Doing so, we get 24 divided by 6 on the left-hand side, which is 4. And on the right-hand side, the 6s cancel out, leaving us with a y. Thus, 4 equals y, which is equivalent to saying that y is equal to 4. We're done!
let's check our work. Remember, the original equation was 26 equals 4y plus 2y plus 2. Let's substitute y with a 4 and see if the equation is true. On the left-hand side, there is nothing to simplify. For the right-hand side, we need to do some work. Using the order of operations, remember that we need to handle the multiplications 4 times 4 and 2 times 4, which makes the right-hand side 16 plus 8 plus 2. Adding all those numbers together, we get 26 on the right-hand side. 26 is definitely equal to 26, so our equation is true and our solution is correct. Let's look at this one. 6x minus 3 equals 2x plus 13. This problem is a bit different from the others that we have seen before because we can see that the variable x is on both sides of the equation. Don't worry, this does not complicate things too much. Let's start with step one. Luckily, there's nothing to simplify on either side of the equation, so we are free to move on. For step two, x is on the left side and the right-hand side of the equation. We just need to pick the side that we want x to be alone on by the end of this problem. There are no wrong answers for this choice. For now, let's just say we want x to be by itself on the left-hand side. For step three, Let's find one thing that keeps x from being by itself on the left-hand side. Let's see. On the left-hand side, there is a multiplication by 6 and subtraction by 3. That is keeping x from being by itself on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we can see a 2x, and from our last step, we decided that we only wanted to see x on the left-hand side. Let's go ahead and fix that. For step four, notice that we can think of that 2x on the right-hand side as a plus 2x. Let's do the opposite of adding 2x by subtracting 2x from both sides. Subtracting by 2x on the left-hand side, we get 4x minus 3. Since 6x minus 2x equals 4x, and subtracting by 2x on the right-hand side, we are left with a 13. Thus, we have 4x minus 3 equals 13. For step 5, we notice that x is not by itself yet, so we need to go back to step 3. What is keeping x from being alone? Well, we have a multiplication by 4 and a subtraction by 3. Since we want to worry about addition and subtraction before worrying about multiplication and division, let's focus on that subtraction by 3. For step 4, Let's do the opposite of subtracting 3, which is adding 3. Adding 3 on both sides, we get 4x on the left-hand side and 16 on the right-hand side. So 4x equals 16. Since x is not by itself yet, step 5 instructs us to go back to step 3 yet again. In the equation, 4x equals 16, what is keeping x from being alone? It's the multiplication by 4. So by step 4, we need to do the opposite and divide by 4 on both sides. Dividing by 4 on the left-hand side allows us to cancel out the 4s, leaving us with an x by itself. Dividing by 4 on the right-hand side gives us 16 divided by 4, which is 4. Now, we have x equals 4. Since x is by itself in this equation, there is no need to go back to step 3, so we are done. 4 is a solution to the equation. Again, we'll leave you to pause the video and check your work. Once you're done doing your own check, unpause the video and see how we checked our answer. When checking your work, you should get 21 as the solution to both sides of the equation, which means that our equation is true and our answer of 4 is correct. Here's one more problem, but we are going to do something a little bit different with this one. This problem says to solve the equation 3 times x minus 9 equals 6. Meet Alina. Alina already gave this problem a try, but is looking for some input on whether her answer is correct or not. So go ahead and pause the video for a moment to look at her work. Does it seem correct to you? 
Do you have any disagreements about any of the steps she made in this problem? If you have an idea on whether or not Alina is correct or not, that's great. If you are still unsure, that's okay. Let's give this problem a shot ourselves and see what happens. For step one, we need to simplify both sides of the equation. On the left-hand side, let's distribute the 3 to the x and the minus 9. This leaves the left-hand side as 3 times x minus 27. The right-hand side is just a 6, so there is nothing you can do to simplify any further. Thus, our equation is now 3 times x minus 27 equals 6. For step 2, let's let x stay on the left-hand side. Now, for step 3, there are two things that are keeping the variable x from being by itself. A multiplication by 3 and a subtraction by 27. Remember, when there are multiple things keeping x from being by itself, you should focus on addition or subtraction first before dealing with any multiplication or division. Based on that, let's worry about the subtracting by 27. For step 4, we need to do the opposite of subtracting 27, which is adding 27 on both sides. Adding 27 on the left-hand side leaves a 3 times x, and adding 27 on the right-hand side leaves 33. Now that we are at step 5, we can see that x is still not alone. This means we need to go back to step 3 and repeat. Doing step 3 again, let's see what's keeping x from being by itself. We still have that multiplication by 3. For step 4, let's do the opposite of multiplying by 3, which is dividing by 3, on both sides of the equation. On the left-hand side, 3x divided by 3, we can cancel out the 3s and get an x. On the right-hand side, we get an 11. This leaves us with the equation x equals 11. And since x is finally by itself, we're done. The solution to the equation is 11. Go ahead and pause the video to check the answer. What should we say to Alina? Let's put each other's work side by side. What seems to be the problem in Alina's work? Look, Alina forgot to simplify at the beginning. By doing that, she ended up doing some steps that were a bit different than what we did, which led her to an incorrect answer. Alina shouldn't worry too much. Mistakes happen, and this is a very common mistake students can make. What's the fix? All we need to do is to be careful and make sure we are following all the steps. Mastering algebraic equations is a huge stepping stone for success in high school math. It can be challenging, but with some practice and some help, you'll be able to solve equations quickly and accurately. If you need extra help, remember you can always ask a teacher or tutor. Great work today! Now that we have an idea of what equations are and how to solve equations, we can look at more cool topics in math. Until then, we'll see you next time.